Hello and welcome. This is Lino Tadros. And in this video, we're going to explain how to hook up Test Complete to some kind of a Git repository. It could be in GitHub, in Bitbucket, in GitLab, whatever you prefer to use, and be able to manage all the commitment um, and the pull and the push and everything from inside of Test Complete itself. So let's go ahead and get started. So first of all, if I go into test complete, notice there is nothing open right now in test complete. And if I say file source control, you will notice it has not been configured yet. So none of the available plugins to be able to use it with uh, subversion or Git or anything else would be configured. So the first thing we have to do is to configure it. Let's click on that. And then in this dialog, which is the project options, uh, you will notice that the current source control plugin is none. These are all the options. I can use SCC API providers subversion, TFS, uh, Git plugin, or Mercurial plugin as well. In my case, I want to use Git plugin. A couple of things that you need to be aware of. First of all, before you get to even this step, make sure you download the 32-bit or the 64-bit uh, download for Git. So go to the Git website. It's a free download. It's open source, so you can actually go ahead and download the Git. Uh, it will take you a couple of minutes, but make sure that the system has git.exe uh, available. And the path to Git has to be defined in here. So whatever you install Git on your machine, this is the path to it inside of here from Test Complete. The last one is bind new items to SEC automatically. You might as well just leave it on. And it's up to you to choose whether you want to use Tortoise Git client or not. If you want to use it, it will give you more options in the, uh, in the commands that you can issue from inside of Test Complete. It's a full client that has access to all um, Git. And, or if you turn it off, that means you want to use the minimum amount of orders and commands you can give to Git from inside of Test Complete. I'm going to use it without the Tortoise Git uh, right now. We'll go ahead and say OK there. And from that point on, if I go say File, and we'll say Source Control, notice I have everything. Pretty much everything is grayed out because I don't have a project open or anything like that. One of the things that I can do is to clone a repository that I've already created. So that's a good idea. Let's go ahead and do that. You don't have to start there. Remember, you can just start by creating a project and a project suite and then create a repository locally. And later on, you will be able to decide to push it somewhere in GitHub. Uh, so it's depending really on your preference. Would you like to start from GitHub first, create an empty project there? or empty repo, or would you like to start from test complete? I usually like to start from inside of GitHub just to make sure everything is set up correctly there first, and then I'll go ahead and clone the repository right inside of my test complete. So let's go ahead and do that. So there I am inside of my GitHub in here. I'm going to say repositories. We'll click on new to create a brand new one. And in here, we'll use one of my organizations. We'll say the training boss. And in here, we'll say test repo, for instance. You can call it anything you want. Just make sure that name is available, has not been taken. Put a nice description. Decide if it's going to be a public or a private repo. I usually like to at least have a readme. Um, it's a good idea to have a .get ignore, but GitHub doesn't know much about test complete. There is a lot of huge list of different things like Visual Studio, Eclipse, and Android, and so on. But there is nothing in here for test complete. We will have to do that ourselves, and we will do that in a minute as well. Choose whatever license you want, if this is public, and I'm going to go ahead and create my repository. We'll wait a second and notice now the repository has been created. It doesn't have anything other than just one file, which is the readme.md file, and that's it. All right. So what do I get from here? If you go to the blue button that says code, we will need to go ahead and copy the clipboard, my URL for the cloning. So I actually can clone it like in Test Complete or Visual Studio Code or whatever you use, GitHub Desktop, whatever you want. So I'm going to copy this guy. And now let's go ahead and head over to Test Complete again. And let's go ahead and try to clone this project. Excellent. Now what do we do? We'll say File. And we'll go to Source Control. I'm going to say Clone Repository. Uh, the first one is asking for the URL. Where is that GitHub repository or the Git-based one? We'll say Control V. That's what I got from GitHub. And you will notice I'm going to get it from testrepo.git. And the second one is that where would you like to clone that to your own hard drive right now? So I'm going to create a brand new folder on my E drive. We'll say E colon backslash. And we'll call it uh, uh, test repo, for instance. Test repo. Actually, I do not have that folder on my machine currently. I'm going to say clone and let's see what happens from this point out. So it actually came back in here, it says, which project would you like to open? As a matter of fact, I don't have already an existing project. So I will need to create a project first, right? Um, if you already have a project, you can open it and it will associate both together inside of that own folder as well. So I'm going to cancel that from here and we'll say create a project. Click on the plus sign. 
and then we will come in here you have to put in here in the location in the same exact location that you created the git so i'm going to say test repo and let's go ahead and give it a name we'll call it for instance my test repo for instance we can use whatever language we want javascript or python at the end we'll say finish and that will end up getting created for me right away in here so let's give it a second there and when it comes up these are all the files that I have. Notice there are plus signs in here. That means this already knows that I have a Git on my machine. So it already added all the plus sign. That means uh, there is a Git in that repository here on your own machine, but none of them have been added. So the first thing I want to do is to right click in here and I'm going to go ahead and go to source control and notice there is something called commit. Commit is different than push. I know other tools sometimes they will tell you commit and push at the same time. If you use actually something uh, like test complete, you have to commit first. That means I'm committing to my local repository. This commit has nothing to do with what's going on on GitHub right now. So if I say commit there, it will commit all these files that are having a blue, a uh, green uh, check mark next to it for the plus sign. Let me bring this dialog and it will tell you these are all the stage files that need to be part of this project. Okay. Uh, also, I will need a dot get ignore. So let me bring one of these files. And I will be able to bring in something that says log slash star.tcls star.tc cfg extender star.bag. That means I do not want to check in any of these files. These are not good files to actually check in. The rest of your team that you're working with will not like you very much if you actually include any of these things, especially the ones that says TCLS and TC configuration extender. This is in case in your machine, you have changed the font and the color and the background and move things, windows from the right side to the left side. If you end up checking in all of these files and you're working in a team environment and they end up pulling these files, you are changing the way their IDE looks. They're not going to like you very much. So try not to do that. And also, I don't want to actually uh, check in all my log files because I'll be, be running hundreds of times and nobody wants to check in and check out log files as well. Also, that's complete create a lot of backup files and that should stay on your machine. You should not bring in uh, these back uh, backup files as well into the repository. So I'm going to click on this and that will bring it in also to the stage ones. These are all the unstaged. That means they will not be involved. And the PJS file, that's the project suite format. I'm going to click on that. That will bring it in. I can leave out the type info.dat for the name mapping. That is okay. And then we will choose the branch would be main. That's the main branch that's coming in from GitHub. And in here, we'll have to give it a message. We'll say, for instance, initial uh, commit. All right. And I'm going to say commit there. Now it's going to do all its thing. It's going to be successful. And now notice all of them, instead of a plus sign, it will have the check mark. Don't get fooled by that because that doesn't mean actually that GitHub now have all these files. You just committed to your own repository on your machine. That means if I go back to, um, to Chrome, let me open up this guy. Let me refresh here. Nothing will be here. Okay. That's important to understand. They will still just have a readme. Okay. But your own repository on your machine will have everything committed to it. So in that case, if I'm ready to push to GitHub at this point, maybe what you can do is to right click on the project sweep and we'll go to source control and I can go ahead and say push. And a dialogue will come up in here. It will tell you I am pushing from origin all the way to test repo Git available in GitHub itself. You get to choose which branch. I only have main right now. You can choose to push all the branches all together if you're working on multiple branches. I'm going to say OK. And now it's pushing directly into GitHub directly from inside of test complete. Excellent. So now if I go back to Chrome, let's see if this actually really happened. So I'm going to refresh this page from GitHub. And you will notice now I have my dot, dot .git ignore, my pgs file, my readme that I already created earlier. And that is my project. And in the project, I will have my keyword test, my scripts, my MDS file, everything in here. So now the rest of my team can actually clone my entire project and they will get everything they need without all the configuration files and the colors and um, the layouts and all the stuff that will be up to them to decide on. Does that make sense, everybody? All right, let's give it another shot as well. I'm going to be bringing in test complete one more time. What happens, for instance, if I double click on the unit one in here and start creating a function, we'll say uh, function foo, for instance, okay? It doesn't need to have anything. I just want to go ahead and say control S to save it. And notice as soon as you save it, the, the repository on your machine will be dirty. It show, shows that something has been modified with that red icon next to it. 
So I can actually say, okay, I'm ready. I would like to commit it. Remember, you cannot commit and push at the same time with the built-in functionality of test complete. So I will have to go there and we'll say source control. Notice I don't have to do it on the project or the project suite, which will also work. I can just do it on the one file I'm ready to check in into the repository. So if I go to source control, I can also say commit right there. And I will be able to give it a um, couple of lines in here. We'll say, okay, which one do you want? I'm gonna say, I'd like to bring in the unit one. So click on it once in here, like that. It will be in the staging. It will go into main and I will say made a change made a change in English, <laughs> change to unit one, okay? Uh, you can give it more explanation to explain what is the change so that people can actually get it a part of the history of the commit itself. I'm gonna say commit. And again, now this is done, it will go back to a check mark, everything is in the green, but actually GitHub did not get it yet. It's only committed to your own repository. So if I right click on unit one and finish the job by saying source control and push, that will add up automatically take it to my main branch on GitHub and we'll say okay and it will take a second and after that we should be in good shape. Now let's go back to GitHub one more time and I'll go ahead and refresh this. We'll say refresh and if I open up script now there is a unit one if I open it up it's a text file there is my function foo available for me right here. So that definitely worked with no problem. The last thing I wanted to show you, what if somebody else actually making changes to that unit one? And I'm gonna mimic that by going and actually making a change to the unit one file directly in GitHub and that mimics somebody's doing it from their own machine somewhere else. So I'm gonna click on the edit in GitHub and let's go ahead in here and we'll say function bar, alrighty. And we'll open up and close uh, brackets and I'm gonna go ahead and say commit the changes and we'll say update unit one is fine for the comment and we'll say commit changes. So now there is a difference between what's available on unit one and GitHub and what's available on my own machine. So now if I go back to test complete, notice I will not see any red, even if I refresh this entire project in here and tell it, for instance, I wanna make sure that uh, I get the latest and greatest. Your repository that this is looking to is available on my machine. So there are two things that you need to be aware of when you come in the morning, for instance, you wanna get everything that is available for you that is different between your machine and what's available on GitHub. So you need to understand the difference between uh, pulling and fetch, okay? Let's start with fetch first. Fetch means go get whatever is on the remote, but bring it into my machine, but do not commit it to my own repository, just bring it in. And there is reason sometimes you wanna do that. You're not ready to commit this, but you are ready to see what the difference is on your own machine. If you do a pull, it will do both of them. That means it will bring everything from the remote and it will commit it to your repository and we're done. So notice for instance, if I say fetch first in here, it went and did the fetch. Let me bring in the dialog so you can see. It's bringing it in, in here from the, uh, from the remote origin, all right? And it's bringing in over here for all the tags, whichever one you want for our, what we're doing, it will work. But it, you will not see there is no bar. See, function bar is not here because it's not committed to repository app. If you wanna do that, I can go to the unit one, I'll say source control, and now you have to pull. We'll say pull. Now it will do both. We'll go to the, uh, to the repository. Let me see, let me show you here. There is, it's coming in from the repository in GitHub. If you have multiple branches, you can tell it which one of the branches would you like to, uh, to pull from. So I only have one for main, for instance. Would you like to commit the merge changes immediately? If you're doing a pull, that should be the case. I'm gonna turn it on. But if you don't, that means you still have to right click and commit it yourself. So be careful with that as well. You can include messages from commits being merged in merge commit on your own machine. In case somebody else did these commits and they entered their own messages, you might wanna see it in the history on your machine as well. You can create a new commit even fast forward if possible and the rebasing. Again, this is not a GitHub video, but you can do rebasing. You can do a uh, fast forward um, kind of commitment and all that stuff. So I'm going to say okay there and notice it's bringing it in. And if we did our job right, notice test complete says, hey, something changed in memory. Would you like me to reload unit one? Because apparently something changed. Say so yes. And now you should see some function bar here in a second. Let's give it a second in here. Wait for it to load. It's loading and there you go, function bar is right there. And I can continue from here and push it back and we can work as a team really well based on my own repository. I can only check whatever I want to check. It doesn't have to be all or nothing. So you get to choose which files or the entire projects or the entire project suite 
and it will work great. Hopefully this video is useful to you to understand how this works and I'll see you again in future videos as well. Thank you.